Hi there once again. This time we will look at what life processes are. That is our new topic. Life processes. These are necessary for the survival and continuation of life. Every species, whether it be plants or animals, have to perform basic functions in order to survive and live on Earth. Animals perform processes like nutrition, respiration, transport, excretion, control, and coordination. This goes with the same as for plants. In order for movement, growth is responsible and to produce new offsprings, reproduction is another aspect of the life processes. All these processes involve energy. Plants obtain theirs from the sun and utilize it to produce their food. These plants are in turn consumed by animals which are consumed by other animals that are higher in the hierarchy. As a result, energy change from one form to another takes place. Life processes, as I mentioned earlier, comprises of nutrition, respiration, transport, excretion, reproduction, which we'll have a look at. Nutrition is the intake of food and its utilization. Respiration, this is the release of energy when a plant makes its food. Transport is the carrying of substances from one body part to another. Excretion is when any waste product that is produced during the mode of nutrition, respiration, is all actually ingested or excreted. Reproduction, as I had stated, is the production, produ production of new offsprings. Life processes require energy at one stage or another. From the intake and utilization of food eaten, which is nutrition, to the liberation or release of energy from the food by respiration. The movement of digested food particles to various parts of the body for their specific needs is done by transportation and the unwanted waste products are removed by the process of excretion. As I stated, energy is also utilized in producing new offsprings by the method of reproduction. Let's have a look at what nutrition is. Nutrition is derived from the word nutrient, meaning organic or inorganic substance. These are used for the maintenance of life and survival of a living organism. Nutrition can then be described as a process by organisms that take in food, which are consumers, and utilize it so that the energy derived from the food that they have consumed can be used for various metabolic activities. Types of nutrients that are required daily within a human body. Carbohydrates for energy, fats, these lie as a store for backup of energy. Proteins are used for muscle and tissue repair. Minerals and vitamins help fight against diseases, so they form part of our immune system whereas water, which is the necessity of life, helps in temperature control and transport. There are two types of nutrition. Plants, which are referred to as autotrophs, are said to be autotrophic in nature because they produce their own food. Animals, on the other hand, are referred to as heterotrophs or they rely on heterotrophic nutrition because they cannot manufacture their own food and instead depend on others for their own food. Have a look at the diagram of nutrition. We have autotrophic, which deals with plants, and heterotrophic, that deals with animals. Autotrophic nutrition. Auto means self, and trophic means nutrition. In this mode, 
the organism makes or synthesizes its food from raw inorganic substances. Plants in the presence of sunlight utilize carbon dioxide and water. As a result, all green plants basically are called autotrophs. Green plants contain a pigment called chlorophyll that gives it its green color. This pigment chlorophyll traps the sunlight and along with carbon dioxide and water by the process of photosynthesis produces its food. Plants are referred to as producers. Heterotrophic nutrition. Hetero means others, trophic means nutrition. As stated, animals cannot produce or make or synthesize their own food from raw inorganic substances. As a result, they rely or depend upon other animals for their food and are referred to as consumers. Animals are called heterotrophs. They obtain their food in three different ways. So we can say that heterotrophic nutrition is of three types, saprophytic, parasitic, and holozoic. Let's have a look at this. Heterotrophic nutrition, saprophytic nutrition, or organisms that use this mode of nutrition. Example is a fungus, parasitic mode of nutrition. Example, a tapeworm. These depend on the host for their nutrition. And we have holozoic nutrition, which refers to higher animals like humans that rely on ready-made or readily available food. Saprophytic organisms, these rely on food for their source and they rely on the dead and decaying matter of plants and animals. Food products like cheese, bread, that's why we can say fungi that grows on these items that have decayed. You will notice there are different kinds like a mold, mushrooms, yeast. These are some types of saprophytes. Parasitic nutrition. Here you find that the organism actually lives off its host without killing it. It will attach itself to the host's body. It could be internally or externally. And then while relying on the host, it sucks in all the nutrients that the organism produces. Example like tapeworms, ticks, lice, leeches are a few to name. Holozoic means feeding on solid food. Animals, including humans, rely on either plant or food in terms of animal products also. This food is taken in by a process called ingestion and is broken down into a simpler form by the process known as digestion. It is then absorbed by the cells of the organism of the body and the undigested product that is left behind is then removed because it is just a waste and it is removed by a process called ejection. I hope you have enjoyed the presentations. If you'd like to see more presentations, you can always visit us on our website at www.arrangeacademy.com. Furthermore, for a subscription, you could always check us out on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash arrangeacademy. You can subscribe to us also on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash Academy. Thank you.